Many episodes of 1960s Doctor Who are missing from the BBC's archive. These episodes were junked for a variety of reasons, but the main three reasons was to wipe and reuse videotapes for future programs, clear space in the archive, and expired rebroadcasting rights. These episodes, unless miraculously found and returned from private collections or from an old dusty film archive, are lost forever. But what if we could get a glimpse? a snapshot of these lost episodes, an insight into what the original program looked like outside of promotional photos and scripts. Thanks to John Cura, this is possible. This is the story of John Cura's telesnaps and how thanks to his hard work, we can see what is lost forever. So, what is a telesnap? A telesnap is a photograph that has been taken of a television screen. So essentially an early version of taking a screenshot. The term telesnap is referring only to John Cura's method, not just any old off-air photograph. The purpose of these telesnaps is that any director, actor or producer could commission John Cura to take these photos, so they had a photographic record of their work. In the 1950s and 60s, where these telesnaps were produced, once a piece of television aired, that was it. Reruns were rare and home media was essentially non-existent. So if you needed to show potential casting agents that you've been in certain productions, or showcase your competence as a director, these telesnaps proved vital. It's important to understand that before the 1960s, if a program was to be repeated, it would either be reshot and broadcast live, or go through the process of tele-recording, which in layman's terms is when a film camera is aimed at a screen and copied that way. In the early days of tele-recording, between 1946 to the mid-1950s, the recordings weren't considered of broadcast standard. However, technology advanced, and in 1959, the BBC recorded over 1,300 programs but only 600 of those were ever rebroadcast. Even then, it's clear this process was more about archiving. Unfortunately, by the end of the mid-1970s, many of these tele-recordings had been destroyed. Many important moments from early BBC broadcasts were wiped and lost forever. But there was one man who was intent on preserving television history. In 1947, in a flat above a grocery store in Clapham, South London, sat 45-year-old John Cura, a man on the brink of inventing a device that would be the first step in preserving the history of television. Born Alberto Giovanni Cura, he grew up to become fascinated by electronics and photography. He was known to be a bit of an inventor, with family members having recollection of his house being the first smart home, with a front door that opened automatically when standing on the doormat, or the fridge door opening when approaching it. After volunteering for the RAF during the Second World War, he returned to his hobby of photography, where he began his experiments to what would later become telesnaps. It took 15 months to get the camera to the standard that John Cura was looking for, but by 1947, he had achieved his goal. He first contacted the BBC about his plan in September of 1947, in a letter to Joan Gilbert, an editor at the BBC's magazine, Picture Perfect. He said, Since leaving the RAF, I have made numerous experiments to photograph the images on my television screen, but with very little success. I have now built a camera entirely to my own design, which I think you will agree gives pretty good photographs. The BBC discussed internally whether John's plan would be considered copyright infringement, since he would be selling images of their broadcast, but concluded that for the moment, he could proceed. By December of that same year, only two months after getting approval from the BBC, he was already on his way to success. He had a special interest in the royal family and took telesnaps of Elizabeth and Philip's wedding in November 1947 and sent the telesnaps to them, along with some telesnaps he took at the Royal Command performance, and these photographs were accepted by the royals. So he must have been quite proud. <laughs> it seems almost immediately after the business started, it was commercially viable, 
with Cecil Madden, the program organiser saying in a memo, Howard Thomas was telling me a day or two ago that Paths had ordered 26 pounds worth of photographs of a feature he did recently, and having seen these on all sides from artists, Cura must be making a splendid lot out of it. He has discovered a business with almost no overheads and an inexhaustible supply of buyers. So, what is the John Cura method? Why were his photos better than anyone else's? John's telesnap camera of his own invention used 35mm film. He utilised half frame photography, which means that he could fit twice as many photos compared to a standard roll of film. This was to save money, and since the telesnaps themselves were quite small, this was a large enough format. These telesnaps were available in two sizes. Standard miniatures, measuring 24mm by 18mm, and in large miniatures, measuring 60mm by 46mm. Cura's exact method is lost to time, but I've put together a rough approximation on how his process would have worked, based on recollections of those who saw it, such as his nephew, Roger Smith, as reported in the magazine Nothing at the End of the Lane, issue 2. I remember it wasn't a big camera, it looked fairly ordinary on top of a tripod, and the room wasn't blacked out. He took it about 10 feet away from the TV. As far as I recall, he said his trick was to create the picture a little bit out of focus, otherwise it wouldn't work. By the time Doctor Who began in 1963, the commission of telesnaps for drama programs were common practice. The cost of telesnaps were included in the budget of the program itself. It wasn't unusual for directors or actors to commission the telesnaps themselves or request a copy. For Doctor Who, the availability of these telesnaps are inconsistent at best. There is documentation that telesnaps were ordered for some stories, such as the programmer's broadcast form, a sheet that outlines various details about the program and includes if telesnaps were ordered. Sometimes documentation says these telesnaps were taken, but unfortunately they have not been archived, such as Marco Polo Episode 4. In this example, Warris Hussain, the director of Marco Polo, only commissioned telesnaps for the episodes he worked on, Episodes 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. John Crockett directed Episode 4. The telesnaps were taken of Episode 4, but are missing. The season that is hardest hit by missing telesnaps is Season 3. It has been hypothesised that after the first producer, Verity Lambert, left Doctor Who and John Wiles took over, he stopped commissioning telesnaps. This could be due to not seeing their value or seeing them as a waste of the budget. Yet, since no documentation can prove this, it is not confirmed. There's a chance that the show was telesnapped during this time period, but they have been lost to the passage of time. The strongest evidence to this theory is that when John Wiles left and Innes Lloyd took over, telesnaps started to be taken again. But this again could be a coincidence. The missing episodes where telesnaps do not exist for are Marco Polo Episode 4, The Reign of Terror, Galaxy 4, Mission to the Unknown, The Myth Makers, The Daleks Master Plan, The Massacre, The Celestial Toymaker, The Invasion, and The Space Pirates. The only episode where there is evidence that it was telesnapped is Marco Polo 4. This doesn't mean that the others weren't telesnapped, they possibly were, but probably not commissioned by Doctor Who producers. An actor or a director may have commissioned them. Before you start emailing and calling every actor or director involved in Doctor Who's missing episodes, note that pretty much everyone has been asked, and the only person to say yes has been Waris Hussain. This brings up the question, what makes an off-screen image a telesnap? A telesnap is a specific off-screen photograph taken by John Cura. It is his word, his product. Other off-air photographs have been taken by viewers of the show, such as Robert Jewell, who was an actor who appeared in many times in Doctor Who, usually as a Dalek operator. But in The Feast of Stephen, episode 7 of the Dalek's master plan, he appeared as a character called Bing Crosby. He decided to set up a camera and take 20 off-screen photographs of the episode itself on broadcast. Although these are off-screen photographs, they are not telesnaps. Cura was quite a recluse. 
spending most of his time working, especially after Britain received its second television channel, ITV. ITV's producers generally had more money and were happy to spend it on Cura's telesnaps. This involved Cura buying a second television and a second camera. When BBC Two was launched in 1964, it was even more difficult for John to keep up. Sheila Smith, one of Cura's cousin's partners said, My husband said that John had televisions all over the place in every room. We never went to visit because he was so wrapped up in his photography, you didn't dare disturb him. By the mid-1960s, demand for his work was questioned by the BBC's drama department, with estimates of £1,300 being spent a year on telesnaps. Some producers decided not to commission any more of John Cura's work. Around this time also, TV programs were beginning to be pre-recorded on film or videotape, meaning a copy was archived. All of this began to slow John Cura's business. On the 21st of April, 1969, John Cura passed away, aged 67, leaving his estate to his wife, Emily. According to Teddy Beverly of the Beverly Sisters, a frequent customer of Cura's work, she said that, Emily told us that when John died, she got in touch with the BBC and said, I've got a garage full of photos, do you want them? And an executive had replied, We're moving forward, Mrs Cure, not backwards. Emily told us she was so upset that she destroyed the lot. Thousands of snapshots of history were destroyed in a moment. Glimpses into our past, our culture, our stories, gone forever. The only surviving telesnaps are ones that exist in scrapbooks of actors, directors and artists. But new generations are breathing life into these telesnaps via photo reconstructions and restorations. John Cura's work is not forgotten and still holds an important place in television history all these years later. Media preservation is important. Junking is still happening today. Film prints are deteriorating, hard drives are becoming corrupted, and even big studio productions are destroying their own films before they even had a chance to be seen by audiences. Do not trust our capitalist overlords to preserve media, for it does not profit them. Preservation is up to the people. We see its value as more than monetary gain. We see that art has value. This has value. Our history has value. Back up your hard drives, hold tight onto your Blu-rays and DVDs because one day your favourite television show could be destroyed, never to be seen again. And to John Cura, thank you. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Josh Nairs YouTube channel. How could I possibly forget that?